What I'm going to do is run systematically through a numeracy block. I'm going to start with a mental routine. When I was doing my original research, I didn't find any evidence anywhere in the world to support that kind of maths mentals approach where the kids do 20 sums, they get ticked, the teacher's the arbiter of whether they're right or wrong. Um, so I thought, well, we know we've got to activate prior knowledge. We know we've got to develop the vocabulary and the basic skills. How are we going to do that? And that's when I came up with the idea of the mental routine. The mental routine itself has three parts, closed questions, open questions and flip questions. Um, during the open questions, what we're actually doing is immersing the kids in the vocabulary that we want them to have. The mental routine is usually hands-on. Um, sometimes I'll be using the blocks for fractions and the kids will be manipulating the blocks. The nice thing about that is it makes the kids thinking visible. I'm not interested in the answers. I don't get any information from an answer. I want to see how the kids arrived at that answer. So when you're watching the students manipulate the blocks, you know exactly what they're thinking, you know what kind of intervention you might need to make. Um, the closed questions on their own are pretty boring. All you really need to do is manipulate the blocks in front of you to match my questions. Is that okay? So we'll, we'll see how we go. Here come some closed questions. I want to see you put a quarter of the blocks to one side. Um, so then we have some open-ended questions. We need a little bit of risk-taking in the real world. There's always more than one right answer. Um, we need the kids to do some reasoning. I kept between one-third and two-thirds of the blocks. How many of the blocks might I have kept? A lot to think about there. Um, so the open-ended questions, more than one right answer. The kids need to stop and think, they need to stop and make some judgments. Which one shall I go with? Which one do I like the most? Um, and then having done that, what we've done is we've immersed the kids in the vocabulary, the basic skills, the kids need some payoff. And hence the flip questions. The flip questions are when it's like a game-like situation. The kids are playing something like guess my number, guess my fraction. They're using the language they've just been taught to ask questions. They're having to do the reasoning to make the eliminations and find their Find, find my number, find my fraction. I've written a fraction on my hand. You can ask me questions. I'm going to answer yes or no. You're going to guess my fraction. Are you ready? Okay, first question then. Is the fraction less than half? No, it isn't. So what does that tell us? Okay, move your blocks so that you know you need more than half of the blocks out there. Is the numerator odd? The numerator is odd. Is the numerator a prime number? Yes, it is a prime number. So what can I eliminate? Nice work. Does the numerator have double digits? No, it doesn't. So I eliminate that. What's my fraction? Four questions. Amazing. Thank you. So I started with a hands-on mental routine, fractions with blocks. What did you notice whilst the kids were working? I noticed a lot of the children who you could actually see watching them, which children actually didn't have any idea, which was a really quick way of doing it. Like often it takes a long time to know where the kids are up to, but by doing that, by looking around, you could actually get a really good idea of which children were actually yeah. understanding what was happening. So as a diagnostic tool, yeah, very quick diagnostic. Did, did tool. you notice any stepping up by any of the children? You know, they got off to a slow start. Mm. and then they were handling it a little bit better. Did you see anything like that happen? Could you think of an example? Some of the kids were doing the, like they were looking, I uh, noticed that mm, they, and then yeah. they started by looking at the person next to them, they were starting to sort of cue in to what was happening a bit more. I was watching some of the girls and they, by the end, they were starting to get some idea by just looking at, mm. looking and I around that. it. Yeah. Mm. Well, suddenly um, they're talking about numerators and denominators. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're using the language yeah. without actually specifically teaching it or saying what it is. Yeah, they were starting to use the language. Okay, and they'd heard some of those words in the first part of the mental routine. Mm -hmm. So it should yeah. have activated that prior knowledge so they yeah. could pull it out when they needed to. I, th I think as well doing it in the game situation, it made more children want to have a go. They were, they were really interested and... Mm. 
You could see some children by the end of it ready to play that game again tomorrow, yes. couldn't you? Yeah. Because you could see they were going to get much deeper tomorrow. Mm. Mm. And that's exactly what happens, you know, day by day. And uh, to me, that's the carrot on the end of the stick. They engage in that first part more and more because they want to play the game mm. and they want to be good at the game. And to me, that's like the carrot mm. on the end of the stick. 